Hi there, my name is Ann McFetridge, and once again I'm coming to you from beautiful Palm Springs on day two of Ishi 30. Today I'm very fortunate to sit with Tiffany Vasquez from the New York OCME, and Tiffany is an assistant tech lead there, and she's going to share some of her experiences and some insights about what it's like to be uh, a female in the forensic science field. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, Absolutely. I'm really grateful to, that you took time out. This is a super packed week, so the fact that you were willing to sit down um, means a lot to me, so thank you for that. So I'm always curious, what inspires people to go into forensic science? So in your case, was it a person? Was it a case? Was it just your love, curiosity? What made you become a forensic scientist? So when I was doing my undergrad, I don't think I really heard much about forensic mm -hmm. science. It was not as big a thing. I think CSI was maybe brand new or not mm -hmm. even out yet. Um, I had a bachelor's degree in molecular and cell biology, but I was not super inspired to go to get my PhD or go to medical school mm -hmm. like so many of my classmates. Right. Um, I ended up moving up to, I went to school in California and then I went up to Oregon to live near my sister and my first job was a temp job with an accessible transportation program office just okay. to kind of have a job to start right. out mm -hmm. while I was still sort of figuring out what I wanted mm -hmm. to do with the science degree. And I was assigned to create um, a database. They were fingerprinting uh, cab drivers who were giving accessible rides for medical rides. And so each week I was there sort of entering in data about it and a retired police officer was there taking the actual prints. Okay. And he and I would chat each week, mm -hmm. you know, while we were waiting for mm -hmm. more drivers to come in. And he said, you have, science, you, know, you have the science background and you're kind of interested in the law. I had done sort of government activities in high school and college. He's like, I think you would really like forensic science. And so I started looking into it a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, I started looking into graduate programs. I ended up working a couple more years in sort of admin science work um, in Oregon. Um, and then I applied to master's programs. And mm -hmm. once I sort of got into that master's program, I sort of realized I was like, oh, I really like this, this application of the science. Sure. Um, and I like DNA again, you know, DNA mm -hmm. again, I'm not competing with these pre-meds and not really mm -hmm. wanting to go that same track. So that was kind of my route to it. And, you know, once I got into the field and got into the job, it was just, it was the right fit for me. Awesome. So, yeah. And how long have you been with the OCME? I have uh, been there just 15 years this month. Okay, congratulations mm -hmm. on your anniversary. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So um, in finding your first professional position after you got uh, your degree, what was that like? Was it a lengthy process? Um, can, can it you wasn't. Um, so my boyfriend, now husband, um, he was applying for PhD programs while I was finishing my master's and applying to jobs. So it really was about where can we sort of find those gotcha. two things mm -hmm. in proximity. Mm -hmm. um, I knew I had always kind of wanted to try living on the East Coast because I was from the West Coast. And so we were looking in Baltimore and New York and applying to a number of different places. Um, and so we ended up in New York, and it was a place we thought we'd never stay mm -hmm. longer than his PhD. Mm -hmm. um, that was obviously 10 years ago when he finished yeah. that, and we're yeah. still there, yeah. so you mm -hmm. never know. Uh, but yeah, the process wasn't, I think I was able to come to an AFS that year because it happened to be in Chicago where I did school, mm -hmm. and I went around to all the booths, but not a ton of places were hiring, sure. right? So it was a little bit hard. Um, but OCME was hiring. I think I also looked out on Long Island. Um, and my husband ended up going to Stony Brook. And uh, yeah, it was kind of where we fit. I, mm -hmm. I did have to wait a while for the background check. I sure. was kind of sitting, he started school and I was sitting there like, I hope I still have, I hope I really have a job, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I was there for a couple months, you know, while they finished all the background and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't too bad. Excellent, and you have not looked back since. Not looked back since, yeah. Terrific. Um, Everybody thinks it's glamorous, you know, those folks who watch TV, oh yes, you know, you get everything done in an hour and so uh -huh. forth, but um, there's two sides to it. So what are the hardest parts of this job? I think um, the hardest parts are maybe not, are sort of, we get mired down in sort of the day to day. Mm -hmm. um, there's deadlines or are people happy with the assignment that they have this week or um, some of the you know, interpersonal relationships between people at the laboratory or between the managers and the supervisors and the analysts and some of those day-to-day -day things they think that can happen in any workplace, not just forensics. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I think uh, for a lot of people who work in the lab, it, 
it's hard, you get mired down in those little things, and these deadlines and the turnaround times and that, and then you sort of forget why you're mm -hmm. there to mm -hmm. do this work. Because I think most of us who get into the field, you want to help the community, you want to do something um, that is sort of important for your community and helpful. Um, and you can forget that when you're mm -hmm. when you just end up in the daily grind. Oh, yeah. um, sure. So I think that's a hard part, and like remembering to take a step back from that mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. As you mentioned, I think that's uh, pretty common in a lot of jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, my job included. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, my boss is listening. <laughs> but you know, it happens. But one thing that I really love about this week and this meeting is that I get a lot of that fire back. Of course. So do you have the same kind of Absolutely. experience? Absolutely. Like every mm -hmm. conference that I go to, I've been to the Ishis and like the CODIS meeting and things like that. And especially when they talk about case studies mm -hmm. um, and I've seen victims advocates talk, sure. you know, and they really remind you like why you're yes. doing the work. Yeah, um, I wish, you know, there was more funding available. We have such a huge lab and it's hard for us to send too many people right. to conferences. So I wish more people could do that and sort of get that reminder on yeah. a more routine basis. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, it is tough. And, and it is such a key part to job satisfaction and so yeah. forth. So hopefully somebody watching has an idea and go, oh yeah, maybe we can put some more money in there. Yeah. So, um, so I know you like what you're doing, you mm -hmm. enjoy it, you've been doing it for a while, but if you could be anything else, what career would you have? <laughs> I don't know if it would be a career, but one of my favorite jobs that I think back to that I had was actually bartending on a yacht on the San Francisco Bay. Nice. Sounds <laughs> like know, it would a pretty be a full time cool career, but it would yeah. be maybe a nicer reti retirement job. Yeah. Um, I went to like a bartending school program that was mm -hmm. like an eight week, one night a week program. Um, and they will help set you up with a job. And that was the job I ended up was working these sort of very small, like, you know, private weddings or company dinners or whatever on this yacht, and they would just mm -hmm. sail you around the San Francisco Bay, and it was yeah. it was a lovely, relaxing job. Yeah, <laughs> so. there's probably worse things to be doing. Yeah, yeah not digging a ditch, that's yeah. for sure. So, um, putting your leadership hat on, what would your advice be to a female colleague who's stepping stepping into a leadership role, such, such as yourself, either mm -hmm. assistant tech lead or lab supervisor, you know, you've been there for a bit, you, right. you, you know, what would be the advice? I think um, what I've seen a lot and what I still have challenges with today is I think it can be... It feels straightforward to sort of supervise or you can take courses about how to manage, but it's very hard to lead. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get people to want to follow you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the way that I try to go forward with it is to try to lead by example as much as I can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I focus on my work or if I try to be the best I can be in that the technical things, because that's mm -hmm. sort of where I am, mm -hmm. um, then the people who work for me will see that and also try to do that, or at least I hope they will. Mm -hmm. um, and also to let them know that, you know, I've made mistakes and that's how I learned. Right. You know, I think people are really afraid of making mistakes mm -hmm. and they're afraid of sort of penalties mm -hmm. um, that may come with that. But I think that that's the only way that you learn sometimes is Absolutely. by making mistakes, Absolutely. you know, and so just being okay with that and mm -hmm. knowing that your leaders can also make those mistakes but recover from them and figure mm -hmm. out a way to mm -hmm. move past them. So Yeah, I think that's one of the things I, I really love about this community is it's, it's very collaborative. Um, people are always willing to help, trying to, you know, uh, share uh, information, share ideas and so forth. But I think I also see that um, in uh, leadership and so forth that I think we tend to be uh, a little more forgiving uh, in mm -hmm. terms of recognizing that people are human, they are going right. to be mistakes, and there are lessons to yeah. be learned in that, right? And and the only failure is if you don't look at it as a lesson and learn from it. So yeah. uh, I, I see that a lot in this industry, you know, academia a little less so, right? It's a different right. field, it's different pressures, etc. cetera, um, which is why I enjoy this field so much. Yeah. Uh, I've been on the other side, it's not nearly yeah. the treat we have <laughs> here. So. Um, so you're a mom. You have twins. Yes. And, and how old? They uh, just turned nine. Okay. Twin yeah. Girls, yeah. Ooh, it's starting to be fun that <laughs> yeah. age. Yeah. So um, in most fields, uh, being a mom creates that extra challenge mm -hmm. uh, when trying to strive uh, for career advancement. Have you found this to be the case in our field as well? And if so, do you have any advice on how to overcome that? I think that um, I find that in the forensic field, it is sort of dominated by women. And, and in our lab, I think people are stunned when I, when I meet them and I tell them that in our lab, you know, we have 70 to 80% women, or we used to. Mm -hmm. It's actually shifting a little bit, mm -hmm. um, I think. 
But definitely for maybe the first 10 years I was there, that's what sure. it was, it was 70 to 80% women. We had female lab director, now we have our first female chief medical examiner mm -hmm. for our laboratory. Um, and I have been supervised by many you know, women in managerial and supervisory roles, which I think is not that common, especially right. in the scientific Absolutely. field. Um, so I feel very lucky for that. Mm -hmm. um, and the average age, I think, for a lot of those 10 years also was all these women who are of childbearing age. So there was, yeah. you know, New York has an amazing maternity leave policy. You can leave your job for up to, you know, two to four years. Um, and they'll hold it for you. Me. No, yeah, um, it's it's not paid, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's you know it's amazing that they'll hold your job that long. Um, so I think I advanced rather quickly to supervisor level before I had my kids. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, I wish I had stayed analyst a little bit more, mm -hmm. like in the you know mm -hmm. doing all the stuff hands on. Um, so when I came back, I was off for a little over a year. Um, I did find that it took me almost that amount of time to sort of get back to my confidence level mm -hmm. um, back at work. Mm -hmm. And I was okay to sort of hold off on a little bit of advancement mm -hmm. at that point. Um, I was, you know, it was tiring, you know, sort oh, of yeah. juggling twins. with twins Goodness. and everything yeah. at home that were young and everything. And my husband was starting his new career after graduate school. So it was a lot at that time. Sure. So I was kind of okay for myself, um, but I don't think I think in our lab, we've been generally lucky enough where it, there's so many working moms there that people understand it, and mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily it doesn't really hold them back, which mm -hmm. I think is amazing for mm -hmm. you know a field in general. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, that's what I absolutely. Um, one other thing that um, I've been interviewing other women as part of this, and I've had the good fortune to. Uh, interview um, a couple of student ambassadors, two of, of which are mothers and of young kids, and they have male lab directors, mm -hmm. but they've said many of the same thing. They, they um, you know, they're always asking how their kids are, they're always, yeah. you know, if you need to leave, somebody's sick, there's, there's right. no punishment, there's no right. repercussions or negative impact on your career. Yeah. And, and that is rare. I mean, I think it's, we've come a long way from when I first started out in, in this area, in the life sciences, you know, 30 years ago, but um, we've still got a long way to come, you know, yes. right? You know, you think to the presidential candidates and, you know, only the women are asked, hey, you yeah. know, who's watching your kids? Right. Really? How, right. you know, know. Ask Beto that, you yeah. know, and, you know, um, ask Andrew that, right? Yeah. So um, we have a way to go as a country, but I yes. do think the forensics field is um, providing a really good example to other scientific it fields is. that yeah. you can do both. Right. And um, women are speaking up for themselves and saying, yes, I want to do both. Give right. me that opportunity. Right. It is hard. I mean, it's definitely a, a a juggle, you know, yeah, but that's of more of my own personal juggle oh, yeah. and personal mm -hmm. choices, sure. you know, right? Um, but I hope that, you know, for my, especially since I have two girls, you mm -hmm. know, I think that now that we're able to sort of talk about my work a little bit more now that they're old enough and mm -hmm. sort of what I do and they know both their parents are assigned, my husband's a scientist as mm -hmm. well, and we both come in and like talked about science in their classes and things like that. Like, I think that, um, I hope in the long term they'll understand that like I really enjoy the work I yeah, do and that that's sort of something I'm doing for them yes, too. Yes, exactly. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah. I often tell people I'm a better mother because I did work. Right. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Right? And yeah. there's nothing wrong with those who choose to stay home. Everybody makes their own choices. Mm -hmm. But I know myself well enough yep. that I made the right choice <laughs> yes. going to work. So speaking of work, mm -hmm. what gets you, gets you excited to come to work in the morning? Um, so now that I'm in this particular role, it's really about like, is there a problem that needs to be solved? Okay. Is there something mm -hmm. tricky that needs to be done? I do, you know, in the assistant technical leader role, I'm fielding a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Like if people have a question about their case, um, and I really enjoy that. And sure. I like uh, teaching um, internally, you know, mm -hmm. sort of training and lecturing and things like that. Um, and having conversations with like both the new analysts who are starting about their cases as well as some of the experienced who are like really getting down into the you know details of the science. Um, I don't testify too frequently anymore, um, but I, I have always liked test. I like that mm -hmm. challenge, and mm -hmm. we don't. And it also um, it's part of the case that we don't get to see mm -hmm. in a lot of the cases, mm -hmm. and to sort of get that feeling at the end, to sort of see where this case led to. And, uh, and also to sort of be able to teach and talk to mm -hmm. the jury a little bit about what we do, I think right. is, is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 
If you could have one superpower, what would it be? <laughs> um, my girls have actually asked me this before awesome. um, to sort of choose between them. And I think um, flying was mine. I okay. would want to be able to fly. I feel yeah. like that would be like really cool. I could get be. places really quickly. Absolutely. And like, I think it'd be super quiet and relaxing up there yeah, <laughs> in a way. Exactly. Yeah. No TSA. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> no subways to deal with. Exactly. You know. yeah. yeah. Traffic? What traffic? Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's a good one for sure. <laughs> I believe my last question is, describe your perfect day. Who are you with? What types of things are you doing? Um, are you at work? Are you somewhere totally different than mm -hmm. your normal routine? What's that look like? Um, I think my perfect day probably would be somewhere outside in nature, like somewhere beautiful, uh, probably with my family, okay. like uh, my husband and my kids. And we like to go hiking and things like that. Um, I may end the day with um, some of my lady friends. I have yes. realized recently that I have like a lot of these really amazing, strong girlfriends, um, and it's just it's awesome to hang out with mm -hmm. them and just mm -hmm. you know have that camaraderie. So mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, that does sound like fun. So <laughs> yeah, love it. Thanks very much for taking Thank the time you. out. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's I've enjoyed learning a little bit more about you and hearing your insights on what it's been like and how things have changed. So appreciate you taking the time. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. You bet.